All right, letting everyone in. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We're going to wait a couple of minutes uh, to get everybody uh, in on the Zoom room. So if you'll just give us a couple of minutes. Miss uh, Shana, will you let us know when it, when it slows down? I think we're ready to go. Okay, fantastic. So welcome everyone to our secondary version of our new family night presentation. We are so excited that you are here tonight. I am Dr. Jennifer Jackson. I'm the very proud principal at Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. And um, just some norms for this evening. Uh, please turn off your microphone. And if you want to, you can leave your video on, but if you would prefer to have it off, that is fine too. And then if you have any questions as we go along, you can put them in the chat and we will answer those questions at the end of the presentation. And if we don't get to your question, uh, we will uh, gather all those questions together and we will email all the responses out. So with that said, let's get started. Uh, I wanted to introduce Mr. Paul Gravely. He is our man in charge. He's our president and chief executive officer. Could not be here with us this evening. He was in our elementary session, um, but we have TBC going on. They are having their awards party and he is uh, doing double duty there. But he says hello and he wants to welcome you. We are celebrating our 75 years in existence. Uh, we started off with uh, the Texas Boys Choir. They were the Denton Civics Choir back 75 years ago. And they really um, are the legacy of our school. We uh, were first uh, just the boy choir, and then we became a private school, and then we became a charter school that encompassed all four arts areas. So we're excited this year to celebrate that rich history. And then we're just excited to welcome you to FWAFA. FWAFA is a place where your passion led you here. So whether you like to draw or paint or act or dance or sing, uh, whatever it is, uh, you have found your tribe and you're in the right spot. Um, and I also uh, just want to say that you are among some greats. We've had some great artists uh, walk the same halls that you're going to walk. Uh, the gentleman on the left is Ahmad Simmons. He has uh, starred in Cats on Broadway and uh, many other uh, Broadway shows. He's an amazing choreographer. Uh, the person to his right is Jay Armstrong Johnson. You may have seen him on Quantico or um, West Side Story uh, or Hades Town on Broadway. And then next to him is Nico Gutierrez. He is getting a lot of playtime on classical radio. And then there's Tiffany Mann, and she is making a living as a singer. And Ms. Ferrara, Ferrara, remind me, um, Vanessa Becerra, right, is in the yellow. Correct. And she uh, just had her Kennedy Center debut. She's a beautiful opera singer. And then remind me of the cellist. Um, she, Tony Gann, Antoinette Gann. Yes, okay. Organ, 
organ symphony orchestra. Yes. So we have all the, we have these and so many more alumni who have walked the same halls that you're about to walk and have really paved the way. And then we have countless doctors, lawyers, mechanics, architects, you name it. Uh, they have been at FWAFA. And I always like to start off our presentations with our families about the reason that we're here, like what our purpose is. And it's really about creating the best learning environment possible that's going to get your student ready to be um, engaged in the 21st century workforce. Like that's the goal, the 21st century workforce. And the kinds of jobs that are going to be the best jobs are going to be for people who are innovative and creative thinkers and problem solvers. And um, that's exactly what an arts education does. It has been shown to increase students' self-confidence and their self-understanding. They have excellent oral and written communication skills and digital communication skills. Uh, they're just smart. Uh, they have improved cognition and the arts really fosters a growth mindset because the arts are all about process and how do we get better and how do we solve problems. So it's really a great vessel or vehicle. Uh, the arts are for increasing student achievement and that is why I am completely sold on education. And then I also like to highlight for our families uh, a national study that was done a couple of years ago. It was of 25,000 middle and high school students. And the researchers found that the more fine arts that the student took throughout their high school, they had increased uh, or higher standard achievement than students with fine arts classes. And they were just more involved in community service. They were more engaged in their school and they watched fewer TV. So uh, lots of great outcomes come from this vehicle of the fine arts uh, married to high college preparatory academics. And I like to call us uh, the little gym of the Fort Worth arts community. We do it all. Uh, everything theater, dance, choral music, visual art, and we make magic every day. If you have all day long, there's like a little, it's like a little symphony in every single classroom. And so we like to say that we're making magic every day. Then I want to introduce to you to some people. We have our chief academic officer on the TCAA side, and that's Dr. Nancy Vaughn. And then in the campus side, there's me. I'm, like I said, I'm your proud principal. And then we have our associate principal, Mr. Mendez. So you'll see him outside at car duty. And then we have Ms. Sisk. She's our elementary counselor and our section 504 coordinator. And then we have Miss Ketty Van Dyke. You guys will all get to know Mrs. Van Dyke really well. She's the middle school and high school counselor, and she's also the senior sponsor. And she's going to talk to you a little bit about student life in just a minute. And then here's the face of Fwafa. This is Miss Shatara Warner. She sits at the front desk and she answers the phone and she's our greeter. She monitors our door. So you're definitely going to get to know her over the first few days of school and over the years. And then this is Darrison Ware. He is our data controller and PEAMS coordinator and attendance clerk. So when you're absent, this is who will get your note from the doctor. So this is the attendance note guy. And then we have Cheryl DeMeyer. She is our cafeteria manager and she's able to answer any questions you have about student lunch accounts. So tonight uh, we're gonna talk about my very favorite topic and I could talk to you for hours about it, but I'm gonna try not to go on too long. And that is the Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. And then you'll hear from some of our teachers about what's in store for you next year in the fine arts. 
So just, uh, I like to give some background on the school. We are an open enrollment, audition-based, public charter school for grades three through 12. So once you've auditioned, you're in, you're in the family. You don't have to audition anymore. Um, and we go all the way up to 12th grade. So we are a charter school. We are not part of Fort Worth ISD. We are our own ISD within one school. And our organizing body is the Texas Center for Arts and Academics. And being a public charter school, we follow all of the Texas Education Agency guidelines. And we use the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills and the College Board as the basis of our curriculum. And since we are a public school that follows TEA guidelines, our students take state and national assessments that are outlined by TEA. So I'd just like to be real clear about what kind of school we are and who our organizing body is, just to give you some background and context. And I love our mission. Our mission is to inspire artistically talented students to have a lifelong passion for learning that empowers them to achieve academic and artistic excellence. So it's like two sides of a seesaw that are totally in balance. We offer rigorous college preparatory, uh, ready for the real world academics as well as the finest fine arts that you would find anywhere. And I have to brag on us for a minute. This year, we were awarded by the greatschools.org uh, organization, uh, the College Success Award. And this makes me so proud. So they looked at um, our SAT scores and our ACT scores and uh, the percentage of students that go to college and the kinds of colleges that they attend. And then they look at our graduates one year after their first year of college, they look at our graduates the first year into the, their college career and how they're doing at the end of that year. And they crunch all that data and we came out on top. So I love that that says that we not only prepare students for college, uh, but they get into good colleges and then uh, they do well in those colleges. So that is a big deal award. And then also the niche organization has named us uh, number four as the best school district in Tarrant County and number six as the best high school for fine arts in Texas. And then this year, our students in our international, in our um, thespian society were named an honor troop by the International Thespian Society. So those are all things that we're really proud of this year. Then I liked to give our families like a little rundown of colleges that our kids go to. They're uh, accepted into tier one colleges and boy do they rack up the scholarship dollars they earn millions and millions in scholarships so they are well prepared for that next step in their educational journey so here we go here here gets to the nitty-gritty so we lovingly call ourselves fwafa you're gonna hear that all the time. So you can leave yourself muted, but whoever's in the room with you, turn to them and say, Fwafa, I go to Fwafa. It is a funny word, but Fwafa is what we lovingly call ourselves and our colors are navy and red. And even though we have 650 students under one roof, I really think of us as four little schools in one. So you really get that personalized family feel. Uh, in elementary, we have 264 students and they're off in one section of the building. Our middle schoolers are seventh and eighth graders and we have about 150 of them and they're in another section of the building. And then our high schoolers are grades nine through 12 and we have about 200 of them 
and they're in another section of the building. And then on top of that, we are also a fine arts conservatory. And what that means is unlike like your neighborhood school or a comprehensive uh, high school, we have as many, if not more, fine arts teachers on staff as we do academic teachers. So they get half and half. Their half of their day is spent in academic classes and half of their day is spent in the fine arts. So it's a one-stop shop for all kinds of fine arts um, conservatory. And we have 10 auditioned ensemble groups. So the biggest thing that you need to take away tonight is how we communicate. And then you really want to, to plug in to those ways, because especially at our middle school and high school, it is a busy, busy place and you want to know what's going on. So we use a system called Jupiter Ed, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. And then we have all of our events on our school wide calendar that you can find on the website. And then every Monday night around 830, I send out the principal newsletter and that principal newsletter is chock full of information to let you know what's going on that week and that month. So that newsletter gets about a thousand reads a week. So you want to make sure that you look for that on Monday nights before you go to bed. Then our teachers all have Google Classrooms and that's where they communicate through the announcements stream of things that are coming up in their classrooms and um, announcements and things that are going on in class. Then the Texas Center for Arts and Academics sends out a newsletter at the first of the month. And then you need to plug into all of our social media channels, like all of our fine arts and our auditioned groups have their own social media on Facebook and Instagram. And then we have a school Facebook and Instagram that's Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts. So you want to make sure that you join those. Then Jupiter Ed is an emailing system. It's like a big database. And then over the summer, your contact information is going to be entered into this database so that teachers can just at a touch of a button email their class or the whole grade level. I can email the whole school and the emails will come through Jupiter Ed. It will say Jupiter on it. So you can see that in that picture down below. That's a screenshot of my inbox and you can see my principal newsletter for week of May 3rd. And um, sometimes we get feedback that families are not receiving their Jupiter Ed emails. So you just need to make sure that you change your settings to allow those to come through um, because that is the way we communicate. And then it works the same way. Parents are able to email anybody at the school just by knowing their name. You can just search their name and it will automatically send that person an email. So it's a great system. So make sure that you're looking for those Jupiter Ed emails. Then our website is also a wealth of information. You can find uh, information about lunch account. Our monthly menu is there, the academic calendar, the bell schedule. You can check your students' grades from there. We use a sender parent portal. You can also get a link to the principal newsletter and the student handbook is there. And it looks like this. You'll go to the resources tab and there's all kinds of things to choose from. Now, the second most important thing you need to take away from tonight is that we have a passion for uniform fashion. Uh, our students wear a red or navy blue logoed polo shirt, or they can wear a white or blue Oxford shirt, a plaid skirt or jumper, khaki skirts, pants, or shorts. If you have on khaki pants or shorts, then you'll wear a brown or black belt, closed-toed shoes, 
And then in the winter time, uh, you can wear black, white, gray, or navy tights or leggings under your skirts. And all outerwear must be logoed. So there's a picture there of what our uniforms look like. And then here's some pictures here. So I love our uniforms. They look sharp. Our kids look great uh, walking down the halls and in classrooms. But we have so many different pieces and variety to our dress code that students can really personalize it and look different every day. So um, you can get a whole bunch of outfits out of white, blue Oxford shirts and navy and blue polo shirts and then the wide variety of bottoms that they can wear. So you can see all those different combinations and um, the ways that they can express themselves in their uniform. And like I said, we have a passion for uniform fashion. So that is something that we all adhere to. And like I said, students look great. Ah, love it. You can purchase uh, the uniforms from Flynn O'Hara. So you can get the logoed shirts. This is the sole vendor for the logoed shirts and for the plaid items. You can go to any vendor that you want for the khaki bottoms. So, and for your Oxford shirts. Like I like for kids to be comfortable and feel confident in their clothes. So you can go find khaki items um, that, that you like, you know, how you, how you like them to fit. You don't have to get them from Flynn O'Hara, but you do have to get your logoed items and your plaid items from there. Then on Fridays, we have a very special day and that is a school spirit wear day. And the spirit shirt every year is designed by our senior class. So this year, the senior class designed this shirt, and I wish I'd taken a picture of the back of the shirt because that's where all the action is happening is on the back, uh, but they designed the shirts and they choose the color. So this year it was that pretty coral color and that cool blue color. Last year, it was like a baby blue and a baby pink, and you wear that with your jeans and your jeans need to be free of holes and rips. Um, I know that's the style right now, but we don't have holes in our jeans and you can wear those every Friday. Then outerwear is super important. So all outerwear has to be logoed and we sell that outerwear in August at the back to school night. So it looks white, but it's really gray. There's a gray sweatshirt and then there's a navy blue hoodie. And then there's a fleece jacket that zips all the way. And then a, a fleece um, pullover that zips halfway. So you'll want to remember to order those in August. Uh, if you miss that sale, you can get your outerwear starting in October at Flynn O'Hara. And then we do a second sale in January. And I'll tell you, our building is cold in the basement and it's kind of warm up top. So you'll want to have those layers on so that you can put your hoodie on when you're downstairs and then take your hoodie off when you're upstairs. PTSO runs a fantastic uniform resale event, and they have two that are coming up. The first one is for new families only, and they have stockpiled a wide array of inventory. And that is Saturday, May 22nd from 9 to 11. And then all families are invited Tuesday, August 3rd from 3.30 to 6.00. So you'll want to be sure to visit those resale events. You can get some good deals on some gently worn uniforms. So in PE, our kids in seventh grade uh, wear shorts or fitness pants, long or short sleeved t-shirts and tennis shoes. And um, they need to make sure that they're wearing real tennis shoes, like running shoes or cross training shoes. So not the shoes that they wear, you know, they can wear Spiris or Vans or things like that during the day, as long as they're closed toed, but 
but they need to bring um, proper um, like sneakers, tennis shoes for PE class. And that's in seventh grade. Then I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention uh, the TCAA six core health practices that we've been following this year. Uh, we've been back in person and uh, we have some students that are at home, but if you are in person, these are the guidelines that we're following. And that is daily symptom screening, 100% face coverings, frequent washing and sanitizing of hands, frequent cleaning of high traffic areas, limited shared supplies and maximizing social distancing where possible. We're following both TEA and CDC health guidelines currently. And our president, Mr. Gravely, is going to revisit those practices in June. So there may be some changes, but we will communicate uh, those out if there are any changes over the summer. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And then also, I wanted to tell you that we are a very safe building. We have a brand new state-of-the-art camera system. We have like 100 cameras on campus. And we also use the Raptor system. Anyone who comes into our building is background checked. All of our staff and volunteers go through an extensive background check. We keep our doors locked throughout the building and we have a doorbell that we have a, a Ms. Shatara sits and monitors the front door. We do all kinds of safety drills during the year. We have a safety plan and all of our teachers uh, go through a wide variety of safety professional development um, every summer. So I just want to tell you that your, your kiddos, uh, your, your prized possessions are in good hands with us when they are in the building. I also want to give a shout out to our parent teacher student organization. We call it PTSO. And I will tell you that they are the most amazing PTSO like in the universe. They do so much for our school. They lead fundraising endeavors that help us with our Chromebooks and our technology integration, our classroom libraries, field trips. They sponsor teacher classroom grants that has helped us to get a whole bukus of flexible seating. They bring um, arts enrichment to the school and a speaker series and um, they also host a wide variety of teacher appreciation events, and they also fund two scholarships for our seniors. So they are a very active group that I invite you to get involved in. They do a whole bunch of fun activities during the year. There's family socials, movies on the green. Uh, you're gonna hear about the Apex color battle coming in October. That is their biggest fundraiser. They also host a senior dinner. They sponsored the Fort Worth Opera to come to our campus this year. And then they create the PTSO directory. So make sure when you are uh, filling out your registration paperwork that you check that box that you can be included in that directory. And then they have a very active Facebook page and it's FWAFA PTSO. So be sure to join that page. Then they also do, uh, like I said, staff appreciation and they do a monthly breakfast and they assign that responsibility to different grade levels. So depending on the month, you'll receive an email if it's your grade levels month. Uh, to help bring some breakfast goodies for the teachers. And that's all through Sign Up Genius. So you'll see more information about that when it's your grade level's turn. And then we also have really awesome family ambassadors. I call them like the welcome crew or the welcome wagon. And they just serve as another touch point for our families. You know, sometimes it's just nice to ask another mom, like, 
okay, what uh, is the dance bag supposed to look like? Or how big is this dance bag supposed to be? Or, you know, what's the deal with backpacks? You know, sometimes you just want to ask those kind of questions to just another mom or another dad. So um, that's what they are there for. The coordinators are Janine Miner and Natoya Ali. And they are going to be emailing everyone very soon and pairing you up with your ambassador. So be looking for an email from one of them. Then we are a bring your own device campus. And what that means is students in grades five through 12 may bring their own laptop or they can check out a Chromebook for a rental fee. Uh, and we'll have more information about checking out a device at our back to school night on August 12th. But uh, I want to uh, emphasize here that everyone has a device um, because we are a Google organization. So all of our teachers have a Google Classroom and that's where they post all of their assignments and that's where students turn in their assignments. They use all the Google apps and students have their own at MyTCAA Gmail. So um, everything is done through Google and Google Classroom. We also have an adaptive software um, website, instructional website called um, Education Galaxy. And our teachers use that in reading, math, science, and social studies. And then in seventh grade, we use Brightfish just to check students' reading comprehension and for us to get a Lexile level just to see where our kids are so that we can meet them where they are. And that takes about 20 minutes to do that little um, reading comprehension that we do with Brightfish. Okay, I'm gonna pass the baton to Mrs. Van Dyke, our uh, secondary counselor extraordinaire, and she's gonna to talk to you a little bit about student life at FWAFA. All right, thanks, Dr. Jackson. So we try and do as much fun stuff at FWAFA as we possibly can fit into every single day. Um, one of the way that, ways that we do that is our audition, auditioned ensembles. Um, the first one of those um, that I want to talk about is the Children's Choir of Texas. So you guys are probably all too old for that. But just in case you're curious, um, Children's Choir of Texas is our very first auditioned choir um, that, kids can, that most kids can get involved in. That's in fifth and sixth grade. And we have the, the infamous, world famous Texas Boys Choir. Um, boys can start auditioning for that as early as third grade, and they can be included in our tour choir for Texas Boys Choir as early as fifth grade, and that goes all the way up through our 12th grade. The Singing Girls of Texas is our girls choir, also super famous and very awesome. We have Miss Simmons on the line tonight to talk a little bit about that later, I think. Um, Singing Girls of Texas, you can begin um, as a trainee member in middle school. Then we have some of our dance companies. Academy Dance Company is our high school level of dance companies. We have Dance Company 2 that is middle school and also into high school. Um, Academy Dance Company trainees, that's our middle school level of Academy Dance Company. Uh, junior Dance Company, which is for our elementary students. Uh, advanced Acting is our top audition uh, level of acting, and that's reserved just for seniors. So that's something that our high school students work really hard to get ready for that. And then they audition the end of their junior year for their senior year. We have our Academy Musical Theater Company. That's our top musical theater group. And that is reserved for our juniors and seniors in high school. Of course, we have lots of other musical theater classes to get you ready for that top company. We have technical theater that helps with all sorts of the technical aspects from building and painting sets to constructing costuming with our costuming program. We have a playwriting um, aspect to most of our acting classes. And then we have a great visual arts department that starts in elementary and goes all the way through high school. Uh, our very first art show and probably my favorite art show is the Monster Art Show that happens at the very beginning of the year. And we pair our third grade artists who sketch a monster with our high school artists they take those sketches that we get from our third graders and create 
a more fully rendered version of that in their mind. So it's really cool to see that connection between our third graders and our older artists. Um, and then we also compete in other art competitions such as the Stock Show and Rodeo Grand Champions in Art. Um, a couple of other art competitions that our visual artists do are VASE at the high school level and junior VASE at the middle school level. Our very, very first show of the year is a dance show, and that's our student choreography concert. So if you have any budding choreographers out there, get started now. We will uh, ask you to show us what you've got in like the second or third week of school. So get ready for that. Dance Celebration is a, a performance that we do in the, the fall of the year, and all of our um, dancers that are in a dance class will be a part of Dance Celebration. For our middle school students, we have a spelling bee that starts in third grade and goes all the way through eighth grade. And then here are some of the societies that we have on campus, our National Junior Honor Society, that's for our middle school students. Um, and then our high school version of that is our National Honor Society. And then we have junior thespians in middle school, followed by our International Thespian Society in high school. For our music kiddos, we have Tri-Am Munich Music Honor Society. For our dancers, the National Dance Honor Society. For our visual artists, National Art Honor Society. We also have a film club that did, does a bunch of super exciting stuff on uh, campus and our student council, and of course, our yearbook. Um, and here are some other things that we do throughout the year. So uh, starting the second week of school, uh, we are a campus that really likes to dress up and wear a costume whenever possible. Um, and I will say that this starts in third grade and goes all the way to our teachers. We love a good costume. So the first opportunity to do that is Howdy Week. That happens the second week of school. So that's kind of when we um, get together and we dress up in funny costumes and uh, we kind of get to know each other a little bit and have some fun. So that's the second week. And at the very end of that week, we kick off or we end the week with a howdy doodah. A uh, doodah is our version of an elementary party. Uh, so that's open from third through sixth grade. And then we have a howdy dance and that's for middle school and high school. Then around Halloween, we get to dress up again uh, as literary characters or famous works of art. Um, and then we have a boo bash, which is our, our Halloween kind of party, which is also paired by a really amazing haunted house that our juniors put together. Then in the winter months, we have a winter formal. Um, another event that we do that we pair with uh, the PTSO is kids take over the school. So kids get to talk their parents into bidding on their favorite teacher, and then they get to be that teacher for a day. So they get to dress like that teacher, and then they get to teach that teacher's classes. So um, that's a really fun day for kids all over the school. And it's really fun to see a third grader be our high school chemistry teacher, for example. So that's a great way to get involved as well. Um, the counselors, so Ms. Sisk and I put together a week called Kindness Week, and there will be little, of course, dress up days because that's one of our favorite things to do um, that kind of go with kindness themes. And then around Valentine's, we have a Valentine's doodah. So again, a doodah is our elementary party followed by a Valentine's dance for our older students. Um, we definitely like our students to show off their talent. So they get a FWAFA student talent show, but us teachers like to show off our talent too. And so one of our favorite events to put on is the FWAFA faculty talent show. And that's usually in January. And then of course we have our UIL one act play. So let me say a little bit more about Howdy Week. So as Dr. Jackson said, I'm not only the counselor for middle school and high school, I'm also one of the senior sponsors. And so Howdy Week is put on by our seniors. And here's an example of what we did this year. So this year, our Howdy Week was done virtually. So our themes were, we tried to get themes that were virtual friendly. So for Manic Monday, that was everybody get out of bed and put your messy hair on and show us on your Zooms what you look like. Tis the season Tuesday. We had a bunch of people dress up in their favorite holiday attire. So that was anything from Valentine's Day to 
uh, Christmas or um, St. Patrick's Day, whatever. It was fun. Um, work from home Wednesday. So we had business on the top and party on the bottom. So we had students wear their uniform shirt and PJs on the bottom. That was really fun. Um, throwback Thursday. So favorite costume from a howdy week or Halloween before, or you could dress up as a decade as, decade as well. And then for Friday, we had Flapjack Friday. So this was a little different this year because we were all still at home. Um, and so we had students make their favorite breakfast and they get to show their classes that and then post on social media. Fantastic, Ms. Van Dyke. Thank you so much. Of course. Okay, so I'm going to shift us back to talking about the school day. So our doors open at 720 and at 745 students move to their classes. They wait in either the cafeteria or the auditorium until 745 and then they are tardy uh, at eight o'clock. And then our fifth through 12th graders dismiss at 345. And then at four o'clock, um, any student who hasn't been picked up yet will go and wait in the cafeteria with late pickup. Like if um, families get caught up in traffic or something for a few minutes. Then uh, I bet most of you have been to the middle school and high school scheduling night. And we went over all this that night, but just as a refresher, our students have a modified block schedule. So on Mondays, they attend all eight classes for four. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they go to their odd classes. And that's for a longer period of time, 101 minutes. And then on Wednesdays, we call that even days. And they go to their even classes for 101 minutes. And then this is our middle school bell schedule. So middle schoolers, you guys eat lunch at 1235 on Mondays and you uh, that's after fifth period. And then on even and odd days, you eat at the same time at 1235, but it's a split period. So you go to fifth period for a little while and then you go to lunch and then you go back to fifth period and um, finish out that class. So that's what the bell schedule looks like. Then high school, this is your bell schedule. You eat lunch at 128. So bring a snack and eat breakfast. Uh, but at 128, you go to lunch and it is after sixth period. And then on even an odd, it's after fifth or sixth period. And then, like I said, uh, those are high school students and middle school students dismiss at 345. So we have a longer school day. Then I just wanted to highlight here, you guys have seen this, but in seventh and eighth grade, you take your four core classes, plus you also take health one semester and professional communications one semester. You take PE and then you choose two fine arts electives, which y'all have already chosen because those were due. And Ms. Van Dyke is working on that master schedule now. Then eighth graders, you take your four core and you take principles of information technology. And then you start your foreign language, which you can choose from American Sign Language or Spanish. And y'all have done that because you've turned in your course request form, and then you choose two fine arts electives. Then uh, we start high school credits in middle school. So you're gonna wanna do your very best work because that's gonna carry through on your GPA in health and professional communication and your language other than English, principles of information technology. And if you are accelerated in your math, then your algebra one, all of those count towards your high school GPA. And then uh, you've seen this before. This is your course of study. And each year you will pick your elective classes. And one thing I just love about FWAFA is you can really customize your schedule based on your passion, like what you want to do, what you like to do. 
So you can take all of your fine arts electives in one area, or you can take like a major in one area and then dabble in another area, or you can do two tracks. I mean, there's just lots of different ways uh, to create the schedule of your dreams. And uh, Miss Van Dyke is your person to help do that. Then another uh, exciting thing that I like to tell our families is our senior capstones. So a graduation requirement of all of our graduates is to complete a capstone presentation. And that presentation is a culmination, a final project of everything they have learned um, about themselves as an artist, how they have grown as a scholar, at their time at FWAFA. So you will start hearing more information about capstones uh, when you get to high school and you can start planning for that. Then also a value that we really hold dear at FWAFA is community service. So at the end of the year at our awards assembly, we award to every student who has a minimum of 20 hours, the community service award, because it's so important to us that we give back uh, to the community around us. So just wanted to highlight that. And uh, I want to show you the map. And this is something that I'll go over really in depth at that back to school night. But the bottom of the map is Hewlin, and this is uh, where ninth through 12th grade get picked up. And then the top of the map is the back of the school, and that's where middle school gets picked up. And then along the side is Fieldcrest, that side street, and that's our elementary door. So these times are wrong on this page. Um, the back door up at the top opens at 720 next year. And the bottom of the front door, it will open at 730. And the side door will open at 730. So here are those times again. And I just do say that uh, it is congested on Hewlin. Uh, we have Overton Park Elementary and we have us and we all travel. Like we're all from different school districts, different parts of Fort Worth, different parts of the county. So set your alarm clock early. Uh, that's why we open the doors so early is so that students can arrive by 745 because they are tardy at eight o'clock. Like it's not the time to be getting out of the car at 7.59, you know, with your backpack and trying to get your lunch, like that is not it. You are doing all of that no later than 7.45 because at eight o'clock, we are all business in class learning. So be sure to set those alarm clocks and get that uh, commute map, uh, map it out how you're gonna get to school every morning. And then at dismissal, like I said, the front door is where our high school students dismiss. And the back door is where our middle school schoolers dismiss. And I just wanna talk a little bit about our academics. We talked about that a lot at our middle school and high school scheduling night, but our academics are very hands-on and experiential and arts integrated and college preparatory. Uh, it is a rigorous curriculum. Uh, be ready to have some homework and to some, spend some time outside of class. Uh, that's how um, we get our students prepared is having those high expectations for everyone. We offer honors and advanced placement courses. And with our Google Classrooms and with our Chromebooks, we are a technology integrated campus. Our students, because we are an a public charter school. Our students take local, state, and national assessments. All of our seventh graders take a Brightfish reading diagnostic. Like I said, it takes about 20 minutes, but it helps us check their Lexile level. And then um, our students 
at the middle school level take star tests in a variety of different areas and then they also take the end of course or EOC in high school and your EOCs are required those are required to graduate and then we also have the PSAT the practice SAT for ninth and 10th graders our 11th graders take it for scholarships and then we offer the school day SAT and we have advanced placement testing. Also, we have summer reading assignments. Uh, our students get to pick whatever book that they want to read, and then they create some kind of choice based project to go along with that. We will email out those details about summer reading coming very soon, like the week of May 20th, uh, but you can also check our resources tab on the website to get more information at that time. Then our uh, academic calendar is also on the website under the resources tab and something that I want to draw your attention to that's a little bit different than maybe your neighborhood school is that on each last day of the six weeks it's a half day and our students are dismissed at 12 15. so you want to plan for those and when you print out this calendar the half days are in green so you're going to want to look for those days then um, our lunch account is also on the website under the resource tab our kids uh, they you know some pack their lunches and some buy their lunch you know they just look at the menu and see the uh the meals that they like on a particular day uh, the cafeteria is all run through that website uh, you have to set up a lunch account uh, they don't accept cash and uh, you will receive your lunch account number on back to school night we have breakfast and lunch and parents, uh, families are welcome to eat lunch with their students on designated days, but we just ask that you not bring outside food. Also, we uh, are getting ready to publish our school supply list for next year. You will be emailed that. One of uh, TBC's fundraiser is offering pre-packaged school supplies. It's mainly geared towards the elementary grades, but there is a middle school and high school, what I call classroom. And care package with like paper and among the teachers. So you can skip the line at Walmart and Target and uh, just buy a prepackaged pack. And like I said, that information will go out um, probably in the next week or so. That stuff is ready to send. Okay, I'm going to pass the baton to some of my esteemed colleagues here. Uh, I, let's see who wants to go first. How about uh, Miss Langford in dance? Are you here with us? If you want to talk to us a few minutes about what it's like to be in dance at WAFA? Sure. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, uh, my name is Crystal Langford. I'm the chair of the Department of Dance, and um, it's awesome. It's fun. It's my favorite thing. Um, as far as if we're talking middle school and high school uh, for middle schoolers, uh, we offer uh, dance technique classes, and we uh, actually, and that's true, obviously, at the high school level, too, and we mainly focus on um, ballet technique, jazz technique, and also modern dance and contemporary dance, um, and then we also, in the course of those technique classes, we talk about um, all kinds of dance-related stuff, like dance history, um, dance theory, uh, we get into a little bit of choreography, um, and improvisation and, and lots of great things. Um, we love our block schedule um, because we get 100 minutes, which means we can truly get in a full dance technique class. Um, we 
uh, love for anyone who wants to take a dance class to take a dance class. Um, the classes are you are placed in a class um, with students that are basically working on similar things as you. Um, and so we love to put you in a class where you're going to be able to dance safely, um, be challenged, and also grow um, the most that you possibly can that year. Um, in high school, the only additional thing that I want to say about the general um, dance studies, thank you, Dr. Jackson, for uh, talking about those auditioned groups at the beginning. Um, and so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I'm going to focus mainly on the general dance curriculum. But if you're in high school, something else that's open uh, to you are some dance electives, um, including dance composition and point. And those do have some kind of like prerequisites um, attached to them, um, but we're super excited to offer those as well um, and I think I think that hits the highlights okay fantastic how about we pass the baton to Miss Simmons to talk about the choir department thanks Dr. Jackson um, hello everyone my name is Miss Simmons and I'm the artistic director for the Singing Girls of Texas um, and so Singing Girls of Texas is the um, girl choir here at FWAFA it goes from seventh grade all the way through twelfth grade and um, we have two auditioned ensembles as part of our middle and high school. We have the SGT training choir, which is grades seventh through eighth grade. And then our touring choir, which is ninth through 12th grade. We also have our intermediate ensemble, which is if you love to sing, but you don't want the responsibilities of the auditioned ensembles, that would be SGT young women's. And that's available if you are a seventh through 12th grader. Um, so, Things that we learn in SGT, we learn um, music literacy, as well as theory and history, um, vocal pedagogy and the anatomy of the voice. We also um, learn a lot of things about the body and um, yoga, which is actually something that I'm a teacher of. I'm actually a yoga teacher, and so yoga is really good for singers as well. Um, so that's something that we do as part of SGT. We also learn how to sing in other languages. So we use the International Phonetic Alphabet, um, and I teach you that as well as how to present yourself in a professional um, setting, whether it be musical or otherwise, and how to um, just be present in every moment. And I know that TBC does the exact same curriculum. They do mirror us, which is great. And we mirror each other, which is wonderful. Um, if you are an SGT member, we have a full orientation about all of our um, choirs and everything that you need and all of the uniform requirements. Um, I think that if you have been accepted into SGT, you have been given a link for our Zoom orientation on May 16th um, at 12 p.m. I'm going to throw my email in the chat just in case anybody doesn't have that. Um, and then I just wanted to uh, just tell everybody who is new and incoming welcome. So I'm just going to read off names for people that are in SGT. Thank you so much. Um, Zoe Finley, Evie Runnels, Embry Stringer, welcome to Tour Choir, Hannah Matthew, Vivian Mullen, Mackenzie Smith, Gabriella Vargas, Mackenzie Wells, welcome to Young Women's Ensemble, and then Krishna Bensman, Janiris Kez Marcado, Miranda Castillon, Paloma Cepeda, Amy Creedon, Abby Davis, Colby Rebar, Sam Ikeda, Sarah M, Kaylee Lair, Giselle Lopez, Emma McNatt, Olivia Morales, Sydney Morgan, Maddie Prickett, Jayla Smith, Olivia Stoker, Alana Stupka, and Grace Verts. Welcome to SGT Training Choir. If you did not hear your name on that list, or if you're interested in being part of SGT or any of our amazing choir programs, Again, I'm going to put my email in the chat so you can shoot me an email. I'd love to get you connected. Um, and I'm really excited about next year, partially not only because of all the things you're going to learn, but next year we're preparing to compete in the World Choir Games. So think the Olympics of choir. We're going to compete in South Korea next July. And we are going to bring home the gold for FWAFA. We're going to bring home the gold for TCAA, for SGT, for Fort Worth, Texas. We're going to bring it home. So we're really excited about that. And thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Simmons. So is Ms. Lindy Davis, are you on the call? I am. Hi, Hi. everybody. So Ms. Um, Davis is theater. Yes. Hi, you guys. I'm Lindy Davis, and I'm the chair of our theater department at FWAFA, which we're incredibly proud of. Um, middle school and high school, lots of exciting things to look forward to for next year. Our middle schoolers, seventh and eighth grade, we have a wonderful, wonderful 
um, theater teacher, Miss Wilton. We have seventh grade theater, eighth grade theater, but we also have a tech opportunity for our middle schoolers, which is super exciting. For those that are interested in tech, you don't have to wait until high school to be a part of that class, which is wonderful. And then also in high school, we have lots of opportunities for theater, whether you're interested in acting, um, tech possibilities, costuming, prop building, musical theater, um, all of those things we have separate classes for, which is also a wonderful opportunity that you don't find just everywhere. Um, and we also have lots of opportunities to audition for outside opportunities like a musical or a play, both on the middle school level or the high school level. If you want a little bit more activity than your classroom activity, you can audition. Uh, rehearsals happen after school, and um, we just try to level it to a place where everybody can have the amount of involvement that they want to have. Uh, our classes are super focused on lots of things like theater history, technique, the classics of the people that taught and have taught theater, acting um, styles. We also focus a lot on literature. We read tons of plays. We learn about playwrights and um, all of the things that, that go into producing a play, different jobs in the theater world. Uh, our tech um, classes involve all kinds of things from lighting design to sound design to set design building carpentry putting together costumes building props all kinds of things like that so um, there's lots of exciting things going on in theater and um, each year you have a little bit more opportunity to branch out and specialize in what it is that you are passionate about doing so we're excited to see you. Welcome to FWAFA. And if you have any questions, I hope you'll reach out to me. And um, we're so excited to meet you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ms. Davis. And um, I'm wondering if Dr. McCartney is on the call. She is the chair for visual arts. Not sure that she was able to make it. So I'll talk a little bit about art, visual art. So we offer classes in sculpture and drawing and painting and art appreciation and art foundations and AP2D. And in those classes, students uh, learn a whole wide array of techniques and they use different mediums uh, to really just let their creativity soar. Uh, they uh, participate in a lot of different shows. We always have a show up and going that they are preparing for. And then they also take part in lots of local, state, and national competitions. And they also have the National Art Honor Society. So art is a great place to get involved as well. Okay. Um, I'm about to wrap this up. I thank you for all your attention, but before I do, I just wanted to give a shout out to our teachers and talk to you a little bit about them. So I have been in this business for 25 years. I got to get my oil of Olay here. Um, and I have been an administrator for 12 years with seven of those years in an arts campus. I was the associate principal at Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts in downtown Dallas. And out of all the teachers that I've ever worked with and all of my experience, I have never worked with more caring, nurturing, passionate, smart, creative people who love what they do. Uh, they are so excited to welcome your student to our family and get to watch them grow. I think that's one of the really special things about FWAFA is that we are grades three through 12. So they're in this environment uh, and around these teachers for multiple years. 
where they really uh, form a strong relationship and um, really meet your learner where they are at the time and then watch them grow as both a scholar and an artist. So you will not meet a finer class of teachers in the entire universe than the teachers at FWAFA. You are in good hands with them. And then I just want to uh, remind everybody that Mr. Darrison Ware is uh, anxiously anticipating your registration forms. So if you haven't gotten all your forms in, make sure that you turn in your socioeconomic form and you check the little box in the registration about being in the PTSO directory and that you submit your shot record to Nurse K. Strong uh, by the end of the month. And I also want to invite you uh, into our family. Like we're a family now. We're going to be together for a lot of years. So I invite you to participate, like come to the shows. Like even if your student isn't in the show, like if you have a visual artist, come to our theater shows, come to our dance shows, come to our choral shows. And uh, if you don't have an artist, come to our art shows. Uh, you are going to be absolutely astounded and wowed at the talent and um, that you'll see at those shows. Then I'll also invite you to join PTSO. They uh, are an active organization and you can take part in some fun things and do some great fundraising. Then Monday nights, um, schedule yourself an alarm because at 8.30, you will get that principal newsletter and it has all the information that you're going to need. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you read that every week. Check your kiddos' grades on Parent Portal at least once a week. Keep up with what's going on there with missing assignments. Uh, come and meet our teachers. Come to our back-to-school night and come to our um, open houses and things like that. Uh, a great tip is to write down your student's Google Classroom username and password and then check out what's going on in the, those virtual classrooms at least once a week. You can find, you can see the actual uh, instructional material. You can see the teacher's notes. You can see what your student turned in. You can see what's missing. So that's a great place to check and stay active with weekly. And then I have um, a growth mindset. I feel like I, I want us to be better than we were yesterday, better than we were last year. So I'm always eager to hear your feedback. So anytime you have any feedback for me, please don't hesitate to email me. I am all ears and listening. Or if it's easier, just call up the school and ask Ms. Warner to talk to me and I'll come to the phone. Because uh, I uh, like to hear uh, from our students as well as from our parents. We can do better. So those are my invitations to you tonight. Uh, Ms. Shana Ferraro, do you want to talk to us about Summer Conservatory? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Um, a great way to get an early jump start on your artistic training is to sign up for one of our summer camps. Um, the three I want to highlight are our art studio, our music intensive, and our dance intensive. All three of these camps are for ages eight to 18. Um, and we definitely divide students up by age and ability level. These camps are full week, full day camps. We're offering either in person or online. Um, you're gonna get to work with some really amazing teachers, um, ones that are currently working with FWAFA students either during the day or after school. Um, but these three camps really do a nice deep dive, help you really just, um, you know, uh, prepare to be involved in your arts all day long um, once the school day starts. Our registration is open now. You can see all the details on the website. So please sign up and we would love for you to hang out with us this summer. Thanks, Ms. Shana. So like I said at the beginning, uh, I think you can tell now why I said it, but we are the little gem of the Fort Worth arts community. 
and we are making magic every day and we're excited to make that magic with you, our students. And we will see you at back to school night on August the 12th. And um, it is already 810. I have gone over by 10 minutes, but Miss uh, Shana, do we wanna take like maybe two or three questions? If you have any questions, put them in the chat. If we don't answer one of your questions, we will take all those questions tonight and we'll put them into an email and respond back to everybody as a group. So are there a couple of questions that maybe many people had um, that we can cover right now? It looks like um, a couple of people have asked about tours. Um, our official campus tours have ended for the year, but if you have not had a chance to be on site yet, um, please go ahead and either call up to the front desk or email Paula and I'm going to put um, most of you know Miss Paula Fukuhara because she's the one that handled your audition and application, but I'll put her email address in the chat box and you can send her an email. Um, and if you haven't gotten into the building, it might not be until this summer, but we will find a time to get you into the building. And then there's a question that says, do you have an ESOL English class? So our uh, English language learners are served in uh, the general academic classroom. So our teachers are um, have an ESL endorsement or additional certification. And so they are served uh, through that venue. And I think that's all the questions we have. So okay. anything else, please just send us an email and I think we're good. Okay. Well, you can turn on your cameras now and give me a wave. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Like I said, FWAFA is my favorite topic and I could talk about it for hours and hours and hours. I could just keep going. So thank you uh, for joining me tonight and being so engaged. And we look forward to seeing you at Back to School Night on August 12th. So thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>